in most of my videos I take a new head check its sharpness on my sharpness meter and then see if I can best it occasionally I'll take a used head and sharpen it but this is a board from a novelty shoot that I ran for many years for the Wisconsin Bowhunters Association kind of like the iron buck only I wasn't so mean and I let them shoot their arrows from 40 yards through a wooden block and as you can see many didn't meet the challenge so in this case I'm going to extract a head that was shot on their broadhead course which was sand bunkers and I'm going to pull some blades out most notably thunderhead I'm going to get a thunderhead out of there there's there's another one there I think there's another one there so I'm going to wedge some of these out of there if the blades are straight I'm going to sharpen those so sharpening already sharp heads is one thing but taking a really dull head and making it usable usable again is another thing and there's a lot of guys that still shoot thunderheads and have a a whole bunch of little Altoids tins and pill bottles full of dull blades that they're going to sharpen one day and that day never arrives so I'm going to extract the blade out of here and we're going to do a revitalization we're going to bring that blade back to life so stay tuned success I've extracted the blades again these were shot on their broadhead course into sand and then into this target now this target happens to be from 2013 so that blade has been encased in this block of wood since the year 2013 I've got many of these blocks laying around so I thought this would be a good test to see if I can get this head, I'm sorry, this blade back into a razor sharp condition. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got that extracted Thunderhead blade out of the block of wood where it sat since 2013. And you saw it under the microscope. <laughs> it looked pretty bad. A lot of yellow paint and a little bit of rust on there, which is odd since it's stainless. But let's see what sort of an edge it's got after sitting in there for so long. That's dull, <laughs> but I expected that to be the case. So it's nicked up, it's dull, but every Thunderhead user that loves these heads has all sorts of containers full of dull or slightly dull heads that one day they're going to sharpen and reuse. Well, let's do exactly that. Thunderhead blades are not particularly hard so we'll be able to use sandpaper we won't need to use diamonds 
I've been doing so many high-end one-piece single bevel heads it's nice to do a double bevel replaceable head for a change so this replaceable blade guide is the origins of our company because I was needing a solution for sharpening slick tricks back in the day and so I created the replaceable blade guide and we've come a long way since then so this is kind of a throwback sharpening this head was pretty dull so I'm going to start with 400 then I'll go 8, uh, 12 and 2500 and then we'll do buffing compound on cereal box cardboard and then we'll see what sort of an edge we produced on this blade. All right, so this is the 240 grit um, burr. I've only sharpened a very short time on one side, but I like to talk about the burr. I don't care what head you're sharpening, the uh, expensive one piece or a replaceable blade like this, you need to get a burr. That clicking is me hooking on the burr. And once I've got a burr on one side, like I've got here, that tells me that I've reached the other side of the blade and I've hooked over a little bit of excess metal. I'll show you a really uh, zoomed in version of the burr. So that excess metal that's folded over while sharpening this side rolls over to this side. Now I need to break it off. And as I go through sharpening this side, I will create a small 240 grit burr back on the first side that I was sharpening. Once I've created two burrs with a grit, that's the signal to stop using that grit, put down 400 grit now because this was 240 and at 400 I will break off that last 240 grit. I'll create two 400 grit burrs. I will break those off with 800 grit. Create two 800 grit burrs. Break those off with 12. Repeat that at 2500 and then come back and use a buffing compound with a pulling stroke and create a really micro burr so I'm not quite there yet with this so I'll keep going and then I will come on back after going through all the grits with sandpaper here is I think it's a wheat thins box but any cereal box any thin paperboard cardboard is a great leather strop right back in the days it was leather that's all I had we can use a disposable media like this thin cardboard so you don't have to redress it when it gets gunked up you throw it away now that we've gone through the edges with all the sandpaper now we're gonna buff that edge and this is always just a pulling stroke it's pull lift pull you never want to cut into the cardboard, into the buffing compound. And as you can see, the buffing compound is already turning black from the metal that's being polished off. There's a fine abrasive suspended in the wax of the buffing compound. Buffing compound really is the key to a sharp edge. It's the last mirror finish that you're going to put on that edge before you put that head to use. Now, with buffing compound, you're never going to feel a burr even with a piece of paper, so I'll do even stroke counts. I'll do it on one side several times, then I'll flip the guide over, just like I've been doing on sandpaper. Do the other side, move to an area where there's some fresh buffing compound, flip it over, do it again. And you really cannot do this in excess. You can keep doing this as long as you like. And you're going to see under the microscope what the finish looks like after doing this. But I'll wipe it off here and give you a look for right now. 
this is producing a absolute mirror finish you're seeing the reflection of my lights in the ceiling this is producing a razor blade quality edge that's incredibly sharp so I'll keep doing this for a little bit and then we'll check it under the microscope That edge looked pretty darn good under the microscope. It is hard to photograph or video a mirror, and we did have a mirror finish on here. But let's see what the sharpness meter tells us for sharpness. 110. So that is incredibly sharp, and if you compare it to the razor blades that I've tested, it is much sharper than a razor blade. I'll inset a little video of a test I did on a double edge shaving razor. So after sitting for eight years encased in a block of wood after being shot through sand at the WBH broadhead shoot this blade was returned to useful service and there's a lot of guys who are sitting on a whole bunch of Thunderhead, Slick Trick, Rage, Wasp, you name it, any replaceable blades and they're sitting on all these blades and they're using a few for practice and they're saying to themselves one day I'm gonna sharpen all those blades and hunt with them again rather than buying new ones that's why we created the replaceable blade guide that's how I started the company so we got it very sharp and returned it to service thanks for watching